our last lab, we explored accuracy and precision in the laboratory. In this lab, we will discuss the classification of matter and the properties of chemical substances. Then, we will examine two chemical reactions that demonstrate the decomposition of compounds. As always, before beginning any experiment in the laboratory, be sure you are familiar with laboratory safety requirements. For a demonstration of basic lab safety rules, you can watch our video entitled Lab Safety. What do we mean when we say matter? Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. Because of the vast amount of matter in the universe, scientists have classified matter into two broad categories pure substances, and mixtures. A pure substance is a sample of matter with these three properties. It has a uniform composition, it has the same chemical properties throughout, and it cannot be broken down into separate components by physical means. A mixture is a substance consisting of two or more components with these two properties. The components do not chemically combine in definite proportions, and the components can be separated by physical means. Pure substances and mixtures are defined according to their physical and chemical properties. Physical properties can be observed without changing the chemical composition of a substance. Some examples of physical properties are color, odor, taste, density, melting point, and boiling point. Chemical properties describe how a substance chemically reacts with other substances. For example, one chemical property of iron is that it reacts with oxygen to form iron oxide, which is commonly called rust. In its simplest form, the chemical equation for this reaction is Four moles of iron react with three moles of oxygen to produce two moles of iron oxide. Now that we know what physical and chemical properties are, let's examine three substances to determine if they are pure substances or mixtures. The first sample is graphite. This sample has the same physical properties throughout so it has a uniform composition. If we test the chemical properties of each portion of the sample, we find that it has the same chemical properties throughout. If we perform a chemical analysis of graphite, we discover that it contains only one component, carbon, which cannot be separated by physical means. Therefore, we conclude that graphite is a pure substance. Carbon is an element, which is the simplest pure substance. Elements cannot be broken down into separate components that have different properties than the original substance. The second sample is sucrose, which is commonly called table sugar. Sucrose has the same physical properties throughout. So this sample has a uniform composition. If we test the chemical properties of each portion of this sample, we find that the sample has the same chemical properties throughout. If we perform a chemical analysis of sucrose, we find three components, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, which cannot be separated by physical means. Therefore, we conclude that sucrose is also a pure substance. Sucrose is a compound. A compound is a pure substance composed of two or more elements that are chemically combined in fixed ratios. The third sample consists of salt and pepper. Since this sample has a greater concentration of pepper here than here, we see that the sample does not have a uniform composition throughout. If we test the chemical properties of each portion of this sample, we find 
that the sample does not have the same chemical properties throughout. If we perform a chemical analysis of this sample, we discover that it contains two components, sodium chloride, which is an inorganic substance with the chemical formula NaCl, and black pepper, which is an organic substance. These two components can be separated by physical means. This sample is not a pure substance. It is a mixture. We will discuss mixtures more in our next lab. For now, let's take a closer look at these two pure substances. As we learned earlier, graphite is a form of carbon. So let's look at the physical and chemical properties of carbon. Since carbon is an element, it has its own position on the periodic table of the elements. Carbon has an atomic number of six, which means each carbon atom has six protons in its nucleus. Its relative atomic mass is 12.011, which means that one mole of carbon has a mass of 12.011 grams. Elemental carbon is any substance formed of only carbon atoms with no other atoms mixed in. Elemental carbon exists in several naturally occurring forms. One of the most common forms of elemental carbon is soot. Soot is the black substance in smoke that sometimes forms when things are burned. Soot consists of carbon atoms with no crystalline structure. Another form of elemental carbon is diamond. Diamond is formed when carbon is subjected to intense heat and pressure. The carbon atoms in diamond form a strong crystalline structure. Another form of carbon, called fullerene, is rarely found in nature, but it is being synthesized and studied in laboratories for its extremely strong crystal structure. We have already said that graphite is an elemental form of carbon, but let's take a look at some of the physical properties of graphite. Graphite is a soft, black, powdery substance used in pencil lead. Graphite has a slippery texture, so it can be used as a lubricant for locks and other devices. Because it easily conducts electricity, Graphite is used in a wide variety of electric and electronic applications, such as flashlight batteries, electric motors, electric generators, and alternators. Graphite's physical properties result from its chemical properties. The carbon atoms in graphite bond together to form hexagonal rings. The hexagonal rings join together to form flat sheets that are only one atom thick. Because the sheets of carbon atoms in graphite are only loosely attracted to each other, they easily slide across one another. This makes graphite a good lubricant. Carbon easily combines with other elements to form compounds. It reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide which are both products of gasoline combustion in automobiles. Organic compounds contain carbon atoms that are chemically bonded to hydrogen atoms. Millions of organic compounds have been discovered and more are being produced each year. Sucrose is an organic compound formed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Sucrose is a white, crystalline, sweet-tasting substance that easily dissolves in water. A sucrose molecule consists of 12 carbon atoms, 22 hydrogen atoms, and 11 atoms of oxygen. Its chemical formula is C12H22O11. Earlier, we said that elements cannot be broken down into component materials by either physical or chemical means. Compounds cannot be broken down into their component elements by physical means, but they can be broken down by chemical means. 
What do we mean when we say physical means and chemical means? Physical means are methods of causing a physical change in a substance. A physical change is a change in the size, shape, form, or state of a substance without affecting its chemical composition. Chemical means are methods of causing a chemical change in a substance. A chemical change is a change in the way the atoms of a substance are bonded. A chemical change occurs when two substances combine to form a different substance, or when one substance is broken down into more than one substance, each with different chemical properties. A chemical reaction in which a single compound is broken down into two or more simpler substances is called a decomposition reaction. A decomposition reaction breaks down a compound into its component elements. We will perform an experiment to break down sucrose into its component elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, using a decomposition reaction. For this experiment, we add concentrated sulfuric acid to sucrose Watch what happens. During this reaction, the sucrose molecules decompose into carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. As soon as the elements separate, the hydrogen and oxygen atoms recombine in a ratio of two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom to form water. The chemical reaction produced enough heat to cause the water to boil away leaving only a residue of black carbon. The decomposition of sucrose with sulfuric acid broke down the compound into its component elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We recovered the carbon, but the hydrogen and oxygen escaped into the air. If we had been able to collect the water that boiled off from the reaction, we could have decomposed it into its component elements, hydrogen and oxygen. To decompose water into hydrogen and oxygen, we need to perform another decomposition reaction called electrolysis. Electrolysis is a decomposition reaction that uses an electric current to break down compounds into their component elements. A convenient way to decompose water is to use a Hoffman apparatus like this one. The Hoffman apparatus consists of three glass tubes that are connected near the bottom of the tubes. The tube on your left is the hydrogen collection tube. The tube on your right is the oxygen collection tube. A platinum electrode is inserted in the bottom of each of the gas collection tubes. The electrodes will be connected to an electric power supply with cables. The valves at the top of each collection tube allow us to release some of the collected gases. Water is poured into the center tube. Notice that water flows equally into each of the collection tubes. As the collection tubes fill, the water pushes the air out of the collection tubes. When both collection tubes are filled to the top, we close the release valves. When the cables are connected and the electric power supply is switched on, an electric current flows from one electrode through the water in the apparatus to the second electrode. Pure water does not conduct electricity, so a dilute sulfuric acid solution was added to the water before we poured it into the apparatus. Notice that bubbles are forming at each electrode. This is an indication that the decomposition of water is taking place. Bubbles of hydrogen gas are forming at the electrode in the tube on your left. Bubbles of oxygen gas are forming at the electrode in the tube on your right. We will allow the electrolysis to proceed for a few minutes and then check the results. We have collected 20 milliliters of oxygen gas in the right tube. During the same time, we collected 40 milliliters of hydrogen gas in the left tube. 
we have collected twice as much hydrogen gas as oxygen gas. This is because the chemical composition of water is H2O, two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. To confirm that we have hydrogen and oxygen gas, we will perform two final tests. We will collect a small amount of hydrogen gas in this test tube from the left collection tube. See what happens when we place this burning wood splint near the opening of the test tube. When the flame from the wood splint came near the tube, the hydrogen gas ignited and produced a loud pop, confirming we had hydrogen gas in the tube. We will collect a small amount of oxygen gas in this test tube from the right collection tube. After blowing out the flame on the wood splint, see what happens when we place the glowing wood splint into the test tube. The oxygen in the test tube reignited the flame on the glowing wood splint. This confirms we have oxygen in the test tube. By using electrolysis, we were able to decompose water into its component elements. During this lab, we discussed the classification of matter and the properties of chemical substances. And we watched the decomposition of two compounds, sucrose and water. In our next lab, we will look at the properties of several mixtures. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities. <laughs>